I recently found myself scrolling through tons of coding content to try to find YouTubers that could actually help you become a software engineer, but I ended up uncovering something far worse. Videos claiming that students could learn how to code in one month, promises of making $500,000 a year as an entry-level software engineer, and even free massages. Wait, I think I want that free massage. So where was all the good stuff on the internet? Well, I decided to find out. For you guys, of course. I spent hours researching, which essentially meant just scrolling through all of these tech YouTubers' channels and looking at all of their videos, which, believe me, it took a really long time. There's a lot of content out there. And as I was researching, a pattern started to emerge. You see, all of these videos could actually be categorized into three different categories. The first was learning how to code, the second was career and interview advice, and the third was data structures and algorithms. So the first YouTuber I want to look at, he's part of the coding category, and his name is Programming with Mosh. And the cool thing about his videos is that he talks about so many different types of tech stacks. So there's a video on how to learn React in an hour, there's a video on learning C++ or even TypeScript in an hour. A lot of YouTube videos just show 10-minute tutorials on how to learn something really quick. He goes really in-depth with his videos, and that's what I found while watching them. Now, I want to show you guys one particular video. It's learning Python in an hour. In this course, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to get started with Python. And then we're gonna build three Python projects together. You're gonna to learn how to create this beautiful website. He's actually showing you how to build an app within six hours. That's an entire semester of schooling for one of your classes. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to download and install Python on your computer. So we're gonna go ahead and skip through the installation process. Again, very cool that he's included that. A lot of instructors do not include any installation processes. They just assume that you have everything already installed on your computer. So let's go ahead and skip to in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a while loop to build a guessing game like this. So one and a half hours into this tutorial, you're already creating a guessing game. One problem I see with a lot of courses is you learn things and they wait until the very end of the course in order to put all of those things that you learn together. So a really good way to remember it if you don't have practice problems is to build a game. Okay, so overall, I would actually rate programming with Mosh a 9 out of 10. It's not just videos that are trying to give you a crash course within 10 minutes, right? These are long tutorials. He has chapters for each section. It looks like it's curated very well. He has specific examples and games. He even builds applications at the end of his videos. Videos like what he's putting out there, usually people charge between $30 to $100 or something like that. So next up is Free Code Camp. Free Code Camp is pretty similar to programming with Mosh. The biggest difference is there are featured instructors teaching different things. So let's go ahead and take a look at their most popular course. And of course, the most popular course is another Python tutorial. So it looks like there are chapters as well. These chapters seem a little longer, which makes me think that they spend a little bit more time on each module. Let's go to the description and just look at that as well. They do have a table of contents with an introduction, installation, which again, hard to find on some channels, setup and hello world, drawing a shape. So it looks like this is purely a course, right, from start to finish. Unlike programming with Mosh, it's not like they have an entire project at the end, but you can see here, for example, they have a Mad Libs game at 58 minutes, building a basic calculator, getting input from users. I really like to see things like that because you're encouraging the audience member to then try it themselves based on what they've already learned. Let's move on to the next person. So these YouTubers are great for your coding needs, but learning off of YouTube is really unstructured and can really only get you so far. What if you wanted a structured platform to walk you through everything step by step. From your first line of code, to career advice and interview prep, to even data structures and algorithms. Well, today's sponsor, Zero to Mastery, has just that. The cool thing about Zero to Mastery is that they offer updated courses on learning Python, React, or Java. Like, see, they even have a ChatGPT course already. But the even cooler part is they've actually introduced a career pad section. So if you're not sure which courses to take, you can start by taking their career pads quiz. This quiz will ask you about your years of experience, what you want to get out of the program, and it'll actually build a custom list of courses just for you. That's probably my favorite part about the site. It really does give you a customized view of what your learning path could be. What other site can you say does that? They also have a dedicated project section that they're constantly expanding, so you can learn how to build real-world projects and add them to your portfolio. And when you're ready, they have resources on getting your first job, interview prep, and even resume advice. Oh, and unlike YouTube, if you ever get stuck, there's a dedicated team of mentors and instructors in their Discord community that can help you with any question that you ask. I genuinely love their platform. I've been using it forever now, and I think you guys would love it 
it too. So go check it out. Links are in the description. Okay, now let's see the best YouTubers for tech and career interview advice. This is Clement. So he has some videos that are probably categorized as tech advice, just talking about how his career was as a software engineer. He worked at Google and Meta, and he also has a lot of videos on how to actually go through the interview process. I think that would be a really good one to watch. Let's do that. It's a Google coding interview with a high school student. Not just any high school student, though. This is the one and only William Lin. I want you to imagine that you are an airline. So you, you support, you know, flying from airport to airport. Clement is really good at setting up a prompt. He sets up a really good expectation for people that are interviewing on how they should be setting up the problems. You should definitely be asking clarifying questions to try to understand what's going on. You might notice that there are uh, these components that can, there are these group of nodes so you can see this competitive programmer is also doing a really good job of first trying to walk through the explanation of the problem. We're 16 minutes into the video and he's still drawing things. So this is how a typical interview should be, where you spend most of your time talking conceptually about how you're going to solve this problem. And ideally, your interviewer is going to kind of go back and forth with you to understand like, OK, is this the right process to go through? You really want to leave the coding part towards the last, honestly, 10 minutes of your interview. It's a really great example of what an actual interview should look like. And I've been through a lot of his coding interviews, especially when I was prepping. Great channel to watch if you want to learn more about interviewing and tech career advice. So next up for the career tech lifestyle genre is Bacola. I've been watching Bacola for a really long time. And the cool thing about her videos is she kind of shows you what it feels like to be a software engineer. She also talks about general topics, kind of like my channel. But the biggest thing I love about her channel is the underdog stories. Not a lot of tech YouTubers talk about the emotional side of getting into software engineering, and she does a really great job of doing that. I think there's a huge gap on YouTube. There are a couple of videos in particular. So there's one college dropout making $500,000 as a software engineer. She has one quitting a Google product manager role to do this from 2.8 GPA to Netflix senior software engineer. So she has a lot of these dev stories. Those are really interesting on her channel. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. A lot of times people get down on themselves because they feel like they've been through things. They come from certain backgrounds where they don't have access, not privilege, but they could just look at me as an example. Okay, so immediately I really love how she's setting up his story. This is really great because it shows you a correct mindset to be in. Someone who came from nothing and achieved $500,000 a year as a software engineer, I think that's really commendable and something that pretty much anyone can do if they really put their mind to it. At the time I was applying to schools, my mom was sick in the hospital and you know, eventually she, she passed away. I was a single mother household. So we didn't she does a perfect job of bringing the audience member in and helping them understand like, okay, this is this person's story. They started from nothing. They had to really pursue their dream. They had a lot of difficulties and challenges that they had to get over. And then eventually they made it. You do get that result or that conclusion that you want at the end, but you can see the entire journey leading up to that point rather than just seeing the person's success at the very end. And I think that's really important to watch as a software engineer because you get too caught up in the technical details sometimes of learning data structures and algorithms or how to actually pass your technical interviews properly, which is obviously very important to becoming a software engineer. But the technical skills are only half of it, honestly. The rest of it, soft skills, your endurance, your ability to persist through things, your grit, all of those are super important. This channel does a really good job of showing how important that really is. So next up, we're going to take a look at the DSA YouTubers. Now, these DSA YouTubers are really cool because one of them I've been following for a really long time and I really like how he goes over each problem and even draws diagrams and talks about conceptually how to solve it before actually tackling the coding part. So I'm talking about Neat Code. You've probably seen him before on YouTube. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these problems. Let's do the trapping rainwater one because that's actually a difficult question. So we're given an integer array representing the heights of certain elevations or whatever, right? So it's a one-dimensional array. The first value value is zero, meaning a height. The reason I really love his videos is because he takes his time to explain what the problem is. He isn't assuming that you understand the problem before getting even into the conceptual overview. He's first explaining this is what the problem is asking. In a real interview, you want to clarify all the instructions with the interviewer first. You want to make sure you have all of the constraints. You want to know what the parameters are, are, what the output is, and what the question is asking before you try solving it. We're going to take the one that has the smaller max value. So right now you can see 
Max left has zero max. His teaching style honestly reminds me of one of my favorite math teachers back in high school. You want to explain the problem in a way where you assume that the person doesn't know anything. They're a complete beginner. And so when you approach a problem that way, you kind of over explain things. And that's the best way to do it because then you get a really deep understanding of what's going on rather than just regurgitating memorized conditions as to like how to actually solve the problem. If you get a really deep understanding of how to solve these problems, then once you actually see different problems or modified problems that are kind of similar, it's very easy for you to just kind of race through them. So let's go back to his channel. He is the OG of going through leak code problems. He has the two sum here, leak code number one, question number one. He has leak code 1299. So you can imagine how many problems he's probably gone through. Maybe not all of them, but it looks like he's picked some really important ones. He has that credibility because he works at Google. The next DSA channel that I really like is Internet Made Coder. He does talk a lot about career and tech advice. So also similar to Clement and some of those other YouTubers, but I think he also has some really good 10 minute long videos on how to master data structures and algorithms. Let's go and find one of his data structures videos. Okay, so these are the two that I really liked. Algorithms explained for beginners, how I wish I was taught. And then this data structures one. Data structures explained for beginners, how I wish I was taught. So we're gonna look at this one. For most people, studying data structures and algorithms is not the most exciting part of programming. To me, they just seemed so boring and I just couldn't. So first off the bat, the relatability. I really like how he opens up his videos with kind of relating to the audience member. The fact that he's saying, you know, it's boring to kind of learn data structures and algorithms. There wasn't really anything out there that was exciting about it, I think that kind of sets up this problem statement so that it gives you a feeling of comfort when you're watching him. The way the computer's memory works, and again, a really dumb sort of simplified way, you have these memory blocks, which are called like memory registers. All these registers hold some kind of value, maybe this. So he's going really low level right now. And I think that's really important because when we talk about data structures and algorithms, you also want to know how it works or how this data is being stored in the computer. You guys are interested in why he's a good data structures and algorithms YouTuber. So again, he doesn't necessarily go into depth with specific problems or data structures and algorithms, but he gives you a general approach as to how to start solving those problems. So let's go ahead and take a look at his description as well. He does have chapters. That's kind of what I look for how I learned to appreciate data structures, what are data structures and why they're important. So he kind of gets you excited for learning these things and gives you an approach that will help. So not just for data structures and algorithms, but for career advice, he's kind of like an overlap type of YouTuber. I would actually lean him more towards career advice, but the reason I put him in the DSA is because those three videos in particular are really important to watch. I think you should watch those before you start solving problems on Meet Code, for example. So there you have it. Those are the YouTubers that I would highly recommend watching if you want to become a software engineer. In fact, I used to watch these YouTubers when I was trying to get into Microsoft. These YouTubers are great resources if you really want to bring your skills to the next level. So go check them out. What are you waiting for?